Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking INFP body language and I'm gonna be mimicking and showing off some of the different distinct expressions you will find commonly in the INFP personality type. Now there are some similarities that I share with INFPs as an INFJ personality type, including that peculiarity in which we look at the world. We look at the world as if it's something absurd. And uh, there is a very introverted cue in this, and that is that of pushing up the cheeks slightly while you're looking at something, slightly clouding your eyes a little bit, making them look a little bit darker. So the darkness in the eyes uh, from pushing up the cheeks slightly, that's a very introverted cue of looking at the world from below rather than from above. Extroverts have a tendency to look at the world from above, which is uh, using their brows and their furrow to study the world around them. But with uh, introverted intuition, it is a detached gaze, a sense of uh, pondering, a sense of a thinking, a processing of what's happening around you. Now, there is an important distinction in this ponder in the INFP personality type as well as the INTP, in that when they ponder the world, their eyes tend to move around, but not their face. So often, INFPs have a very rigid body language. They don't move around their body much. Their head remains secure, and often with their neck pulled slightly up, their head pulled slightly up, as it looking at the world from above, below. And here, what I want you to study is the, the way the eyes dart while they are thinking, because INFPs and INTPs tend to have very darting eyes while they are thinking. Often what I found with INJs is INJs such as myself are, we don't tend to move our eyes as much. We focus more on the movement of the face itself. So we have a searching gaze, which is when your whole head moves with your gaze, which means when we are thinking about something, when we are pondering something, our head follows our eyes, or our head directs our eyes, which makes it look like we're searching our, scanning our environment for what's happening around us. So that's an important distinction. And it's mainly focused on intuition. But another important distinction is in the feeling itself. And here, often what I find is that judging types tend to have a focused gaze which centers where all expressions start in the midpoint of the face. Smiles start in the middle, the gaze, the focus starts in the middle. So often what you find is that the uh, INFP's eyes tend to remain strangely unfocused or broad or wide-eyed. INFPs remain wide-eyed, which means they remain open to what's happening around them, what could happen next, what new options could emerge, what changes could happen. INFPs look, and here is where you see most activity, around the outer parts of the eyes, open to possibilities where INFJs remain narrow and focused, which is often our whole eyes and our whole gaze and our whole focus, our whole eyes focus on their surroundings. With INFPs, it's what you have to recognize is also the activity in the outer parts of, a, of the face as a whole. Often it is that the, the cheeks tend to remain relatively non expressive, but you will always notice a lot of reaction in the outer parts of the yaws, which means when they are listening to you, what you will find is their mouths tend to fall open a little bit and their, their yaws tend to drop. And here is where you see like when the INFP is thinking, with this expression, often it signifies a sense of interpretation. It's a ha. Huh. So, are you sure about that? It signifies a sense of disbelief or uncertainty or ambiguity or relativity in the INFP's thinking. The ability to take yourself back a bit, pulling your head slightly back from the other person and studying them from a distance like introverted intuitives do. But also processing what they are saying. Is this true or not? The feeling perceiving factor of the INFP makes them 
act like lie detectors and it makes them appear as if they are processing or thinking about what you're saying and if it's true or not and that question of truth and of searching truth and that drop your uh, it signifies that of wow could that be true could that make sense could that be and that's a part of the INFP's openness, the INFP's heightened openness to new information and to other people's truth and other people's side of the picture. The INFP is interested in how other people feel, what they value, what they don't value. So the INFP is looking for these things in, uh, in, in average. And here it means just trying to figure out what another person is saying, what do they mean, what does this mean to them. And there is a surprise factor in this of, so that's what they mean. So, oh, I get it. I understand. I see what you mean. That dropped Shin and that dropped Ya, that's INFP understanding and resonation. You want to be looking for that a lot when you're studying the INFP. Do they seem to understand what you are saying? Do they seem to resonate with what you're saying? Or do they seem to be taken aback by it or do they seem to find it distasteful what you'll find is INFPs they are not known for a lot of expression or emotion but they do show very strongly whether they like something or not you can see in their frown and in their face whether they go along with or relate to something or whether they feel cut off or disconnected from something so when looking at the hands and the expressions of the perceiving type, often what I find is perceiving gestures tend to start with the hands close to each other's, but then going slowly outwards. This is expanding your reach, expanding your horizon, taking in more, going from the small to the big. Often what I find with judges is the opposite, that it's the starting with the big and then going towards the small, narrowing down centering focusing scanning the perceiving option is that of slowly going wait a second there's that and there's that and slowly the hands become more stretched out so the gesture start in the center move outwards rather than starting outwards and moving inwards and it's more to that than that often the perceiving types hand gestures tend to face towards themselves where the judges' hand gestures tend to face in front of an audience or somebody that they are trying to influence or manage or control. So the perceiver starts and focuses with self-control, with uh, gathering data or information or processing information or data, holding it up, weighing it. Do I like this? Do I like that better? Or maybe that or maybe that. It's also that the judges tend to move all their hands together where the perceiver tends to have used both in the apart from each others like they are judge, juggling with different balls or <laughs> compared to the judges uh, focus on the whole and on everything it's more as well because the perceivers the introverted perceiving types the introverts tend to start with their hands close to each their body then going outwards. So often what you see is this grabbing motion. Often it's that introverts pull information from inside. They are taking it from their inner world to share with others. Where the extrovert is taking from the outer world and then taking inwards. So often it's that what's happening around me and then it's that of taking in what's happening around you. That's the extroverted motion. The introverted motion is that of what am I feeling inside? What is it? And often it's like a it's a slower pull because you have to really draw it out. It's not something that you can just grab for. It's something you have to actually draw for and like actually think about. And here you can also see the INFP's tendencies in that their finger movements, while they do move their hands, they're so fluid and so elegant. They are not dealing with precise facts. They are not dealing with this and that and how much and that many centimeters. They are dealing with nuances and flow, so often there's like a sense of just pulling and feeling and resonating with or dealing with something. And that's often how I recognize the INFP's hand gestures. This, this motion of holding something up that you've drawn out and going like, here's what it is. And <laughs> often um, 
I think the INFP is uh, their body language is very telling and it's an additional layer to what they are saying because often you're gonna see these expressions the most when the INFP is in flow so what you're gonna be having to ask yourself is is the INFP in flow you can listen to what the INFP says and that's the most important if they say they are a certain way if the INFP tells you they value a certain thing always listen to them always take that seriously but do look to their body language as an enhancer of this expression and of what they say. Does their body language align and connect with what they say? When they are talking about how much they value honesty, are they showing that in their gestures or in their hands? Or are they showing that in their reactions and their expressions, in their authenticity, in their body language? Because that's a very big cue that you are dealing with a true INFP. Is there however a sense of tenseness while they say these things? A sense of pulling up of the cheeks and of the yaws and a sense of guardedness and a sense of like strengthen that because that can symbolize stress and that can symbolize the inferior function. Often when you go into the inferior function as a TJ type you might be coming from I value honesty because I've been uh, lied to so many times in my old relationships. And that's not necessarily the same as value, valuing authenticity. That's uh, being stressed about authenticity. There's a difference between the flow functions and the inferior functions. And the distinction is that when we engage in our flow functions, our body language becomes more relaxed and open and effortless and we gesticulate more with our hands and our facial expressions seem more open and fluid and we seem more agreeable but when we are engaging in our inferior functions we seem more guarded we seem more tense uh, perhaps uh, the INFP starts to really push on their forehead and they start seeming really focused and attentive but at the same time tense and annoyed and agitated and I think that's looking for those negative emotions in an INFP, noticing, recognizing when they are angry and where their focus suddenly goes from zero to 100, or recognizing when they are becoming uh, pained or anxious about something and their whole face and their facial expressions become more guarded and cold. I think that can also help you understand an INFP when they are not talking to you, because you know, INFPs, they tend to hold the most of their emotions inside. Communication is difficult for an INFP. Sharing how you feel, putting it out there, making yourself vulnerable, that's all very, very difficult as an INFP personality type. So if you're trained and you have the ability to read an INFP and notice stress and notice anxiety, you can perhaps learn to communicate better with INFPs even when they are not communicating with you. So I hope this video will help you manage INFPs better. And if you're an INFP, I hope it will make you understand yourself better. Because I think it's important to start listening to your own body language. And that means basically being able to understand your own reactions and your own frowns and why you suddenly look so annoyed or so tense or why you suddenly felt anxious. It can help also bring a level of heightened consciousness, self-consciousness which is also an ability to manage your own emotions, to recognize when you're feeling upset over something or ashamed of something or uh, agitated about something when you are or starting to feel worried or afraid. Uh, it can help you become aware of that. And when you're aware of that, you can also process it better because INFPs, they, they thrive on you know that of uh, the right path, the right way forward, the right understanding, the right nuance. And that's also the right nuance and understanding of self. It's easy to misunderstand even yourself sometimes because I think we have so many different emotions, so many different expressions, so many different feelings often at the same time. And learning to pick them apart and to hold them up against each other and learning to understand them in yourself, what tr triggers them, what triggers you, what makes you feel a certain way, that's also managing your sensitivity, which is very important. Often you get to a point as an INFP where you embrace your sensitivity, but you also become better at managing it and understanding it. Because the worst, in a way, is when you don't. I think the times when I've got the most angry and upset with myself have also been the times where I understood myself the least. So enough babbling. I 
Thanks for watching this video. If you like these videos, if you want more of these videos, please subscribe. Uh, visit my Patreon page, patreon.com slash ericdor. Leave a donation or just leave a nice comment and I hope to see you guys in the next video.